All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. We always do. After the prayer, we'll uh, continue from where we stop. So I'll leave it open. Anyone can please lead in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. So we pray that uh, whatever we learn through this class today, we'll put it into practice so that we can be a blessing to others, help us grow from our heart and listen to the deep truths in the Bible. Uh, that pastor teaches us, we blessed our pastor and God that prayed for all the classes. I pray that we uh, will be a the mission of this session so that nothing will be a distraction, but whatever we do will be done for your glory. Jesus, let your name be glorified. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jafina. Right. Uh, so last week we started off with uh, career growth. And we looked at, you know, even as we are in the corporate sector or in ministry, uh, career growth is something that we all desire, right? And we looked at uh, how we can enjoy the rewards of our work. Promotion comes from the Lord. Excellence will be rewarded. And we need the wisdom of God because wisdom opens the right doors for us. Um, and even as we uh, work wherever we are, uh, be sincere in what we do, be gracious in our speech, in our actions. Uh, and even as we see growth in our lives, especially, you know, the, in corporate or in ministry, we're seeing the Lord is just raising us up, we're getting promotions. Uh, remember, the stakes are higher, the higher up you go, uh, right? So, so it's not like the higher we go, it's the easier it's going to get, uh, uh, right? With greater responsibilities. Uh, comes greater uh, effectiveness. We need to be effective, productive, and everything that we do. So we stopped here. Uh, now let's go to the next point. We have a few more points to complete this chapter, and then we'll go to chapter 19, work-life balance. But let's complete these uh, three points. Uh, be patient as you transition through unemployment. Now, there will be times uh, we will be stepping from one company or one organization to another. Right during those times, uh, it you know especially people who have been working all your life, you, you know we can't stay at home. Uh, we just need to do something, uh, and it's also a difficult season because transition is not always easy. Uh, but be patient through those seasons of transition, that season of unemployment. Continue to you know look to God, and God will you know ask God to give you the wisdom to choose the right doors because at times. Either there will be you know, no doors opening, or there may be multiple doors opening. And so for both, we need the wisdom of God. Oh, there's no doors opening. OK, God, I'm going to trust you, trust in your word, trust in what you have promised, and continue to apply, do what you have to do. But it, on the flip side, you may have three or four openings. Or which is the right door that I must step into? Right? So be patient during this transition continue to do the things that you want to do um, right uh, uh, especially during these times of uh, you know, unemployment uh, it's easy to have a lot of uh, emotional distress negative emotions depression anxiety uh, despair now, all these kind of things may come in right but our responsibility is to wait on the lord uh, now when we say wait on the Lord, does not mean be idle. We talked about this before. When we say wait on the Lord, it means uh, continue to do the things in the natural, right? You apply for jobs, you apply for uh, roles that you feel you can be good at, or maybe even upskill in what you're doing. Uh, waiting does not mean inactivity, uh, but at the right time, it's God preparing you to get into this place that he wants you to be. Psalms 37, 23, and 23 to 25 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him in, with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, I, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. And I, I really love this verse. The steps 
of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Now, we're not uh, gender specific here when we say man, it is both man and woman. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And when God orders our steps, he will delight in his ways. Right? So, what if God is saying, you know, during this transition, uh, you know, what if there are no doors opening? Delight in his ways. Because know that he's preparing you for something. He's preparing you for maybe the right door to open, right? Now, we must also remember that sometimes we make mistakes, right? And we step out of that, probably a job or uh, whatever we are doing, we step out because of anything, right? Uh, whatever may have come our way. Uh, but remember, God can restore us back. God is a God of restoration. He is able and willing to realign us um, during the season of employment, right? So he's willing to you know, just maybe we have gone away. He's willing to restore us back, right? And I've heard this from many people, you know, uh, and these, this has happened where people have lost their jobs, right? They've been working in the corporate sector. And, uh, they've been in this corporate sector for working hard Monday to Friday. Uh, and all of a sudden, they've lost their jobs. And it was a very painful, very difficult season because they've got commitments, they've got family. Um, uh, there are needs that need, have to be met. But during the time of transition, the Lord has spoken to them saying, you know, these are testimonies that people have shared with me. Uh, the Lord has spoken to them, not laid off from the job, I would not have been able to restore my relationship with God because I was so busy Monday to Friday, just doing the things of, you know, in the working in the corporate sector. I didn't have time for prayer. I didn't have time for reading the word. I didn't have time for family. I didn't have time for my children, right? And these times of unemployment, you know, this waiting time is not always wasted, right? Uh, it, it can be used to restore yourselves back to the Lord. Next one. Look ahead as you step into your new role, right? Uh, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Uh, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Right Now, here's the thing. Uh, it, it may not be exactly what we're trying to bring out this scripture, but what we want to see is the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not looking behind on the things that I have achieved, on the things that I have done. But I press forward to the goal which God wants me to achieve. Right? So if we take it in and if you if you translate it in context to ours, to each one of us, uh, whether we are in the corporate or in ministry, forget about the past victories, right? We remember it, we think about it, or even our past failures, we uh, we don't dwell on it. Right? It's, it's important to learn from our past mistakes, but we don't dwell on it. But even as you step into a new role, whether in corporate, whether in ministry, when you step into a new role, look ahead with a, you know, with a passion, with a zeal, with a confidence, knowing that God is with you. Right? Now, for example, you, 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 know, you, you were in a corporate sector, you had a two months break, and now you're getting into a new job, new company, new culture, new values, uh, everything is new. No friends, new friends, new managers, new leaders. Now, it may be difficult initially, but look ahead with confidence, right? We have to make every effort in our new job uh, and do our best in what we are doing, right? Uh, especially, you know, when we are getting into a new environment, Right. It's it's a it, for us some of us it may be hostile. Right? We'll talk more about it in in work life balance as well, right? Uh, sometimes it, it may be a hostile environment. Right? We may think it's a hostile environment, right? But it's just people working, right? Uh, and sometimes we may lose confidence because we may not know the product. We may not know what's happening in the organization. We're still yet to learn. But remember that 
when we look ahead, knowing that, okay, I'm here in this organization, uh, we put every effort in this, right? We don't look at our bad failures, bad experiences that happened in the past, but we look ahead saying, God, I know you're with me, even during this time of transition, even during this new role, this new job, I know that you can help me, right? You know, as I'm sharing this, I remember, uh, you know, I think it was early 2013. 2013, I may have the year wrong, but uh, 2013, I guess, when we had a couple of campaigns happening uh, in uh, in our nation, and these are these were also global campaigns, right? Um, now, all of a sudden, I was asked to lead this campaign. I was very, very nervous. I said, my gosh, uh, this is going to be really difficult because, you know, I was I was comfortable going on the streets, standing, giving out tracks. That's my forte. So I can stand on the streets the entire day and give out tracks. It's not a problem at all. I enjoyed it. And I still enjoy it. Uh, I can I can also, you know, uh, you know, uh, things that, you know, calling up people, praying for them. That's that's fine with me. I, I love, I enjoy doing this. But all of a sudden, this role came in where, you know, it's all now Word documents, Excel sheets, and you have all about 200 odd pastors that had to, uh, you had to, you know, work along with them to make sure that uh, the campaign is running smoothly in their areas, uh, meet with them online, uh, you know, uh, get feedback, get inputs from them, uh, you know. So it was a lot of, a uh, lot of different kind of a tasks, right? Uh, but I remember, when I was taking out this role, uh, I was so nervous, so nervous. I said, "God, uh, no, talking, and this is not my forte. Uh, this is not something that I'm strong at. Uh, how will I talk to these pastors and leaders? How will I bring, uh, you know, what about bringing correction? What about, uh, you know, uh, now uh, I was very young, and these are pastors who are, you know, 20, 30 years in the Lord. How can I be telling them what to do? And all these thoughts came in." And I remember, uh, you know, just going up to God and just hearing from God and uh, God just speaking to me, ministering to me and saying, you know, this is the door I've opened for you. You have a choice. You either take it. It is a door I have opened for you. Now, you do what you have to do to, you know, to build yourself and, and, and to take up this role and to do it effectively. It was very clear to me. I have opened the door for you. Uh, and so I remember going back and, you know, just preparing, uh, getting help from whoever I could. Uh, and I'm glad I took it because after that, there were many, many opportunities that opened for me. Uh, so you you never know, right, when, these, when something new comes up. Through that, many other opportunities may come. Next form, be courageous as you move from employment to entrepreneurship. Right? Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, when you talk about entrepreneurship, it is exciting, right? Uh, the process of starting an organization, starting a business, starting a church, starting a ministry. Um, it's very exciting, right? So, for example, some of us may be staff in a, in a corporate sector or uh, anywhere else. And all of a sudden, you feel the Lord is leading you to be an entrepreneur. You start your own. So even as you do that, remember that you need to, like we talked about it, right? You need to have a vision, uh, the best way to determine things that is ahead, uh, uh, you know, plan well, way in advance, uh, spend good amount of time preparing yourself, prepare both, you know, for the seen, for the unseen, uh, uh, things that can happen, and ultimately, uh, moving from you know employment to entrepreneurship is a big step of faith right but even as you take that step of faith it's not a step of faith in foolishness but it's a step of faith in wisdom right do it depending on the lord do it being strong being courageous and when we step out in faith uh you know uh, prepare yourself step out in faith now, the wrong notion is that, hey, I'll step out in faith. What follows after that 
is you know uh, depends on what is happening around right or the consequences after that it's not my problem because i've stepped out in faith no that's so wrong right stepping out in faith also involves doing the work needed right and everywhere we see it in the bible where faith without works is is dead right so i can step out in faith but i also have to do that work required right elijah prayed for rain but he was kneeling and you know elijah knew it's going to rain but he was kneeling and praying for the rain to come in right jesus uh, told the man uh, uh, he put you know this dust in his eyes and dirt in his eyes and he said go and wash yourself off you do it right and and so plenty of examples of faith it's a moving from our employment to entrepreneurship is a step of faith even as we do it do it prepared and you know planned the way right so we've come to the close of this chapter any questions any thoughts before we go into work life balance again this is a very important chapter uh, any questions all right okay so let's get into work life balance now what balancing work and personal life it is a serious challenge that we see right now right? managing work managing life uh, managing family now many many times you know we spend excessive time either at work it's mostly at work and we have less time with family right but god is calling us to maintain this work life balance what is work life balance it's basically uh, uh, uh ultimate, arriving at a place where you and your family and the ways of your life are all together you know just intertwined together nothing is overlooked nothing is uh, you know none of, none of the aspects is overlooked right now here's what it is I was speaking to this gentleman and he was telling me, Pastor, whenever Monday comes, I'm very happy. Usually it's the other way around, and I was surprised. He said, I'm very happy when Monday comes. So everyone dread of Monday, or they don't want to go to the workplace. But I thought, okay, maybe he loves his job. So I, so he told me, Oh, I love Mondays. I said, Oh, that's wonderful. So you love your job. He said, No, I don't love my job. My desk, my laptop, the things on my table, my workstation, that's my comfort zone. I was taken aback. So, you know, his desk, his workstation is his comfort zone. Now, I do understand we all have your place where you're sitting. But what he was talking about was not about this physical comfort zone, but he was talking about in his soul. Right? Uh, and I knew it. He was talking about you know, other things, his emotions, his, his family, his work. Everything was in that place. And he was telling me, the moment I go home, I feel lost. I feel I'm not in my comfort zone. Now, this is a place, this is a dangerous place to be because it should be the other way around. Home is a place where you are in your comfort zone. That's what he said. In the workplace, I, I, I like to work because everything is going so smoothly in the workplace. I work hard, everything is very smooth. But when I go home, there are a lot of challenges. There are two kids. It's my wife, and two kids, and there's so much to do. And I just become tired, I don't want to do it. So I like the workplace. Now, what, what can we see here? I told him, you know, uh, I just shared with him. I said, see, this is, a, this is something that we have to correct, right? Because we, you have to maintain a good work-life balance. You, it shouldn't be that you become a CEO and your own family says, he was not there for me, right? So what does it say? Yeah, you're good in this, but the other aspect, you've not been good enough, right? So... 
potential contributing factors to work life imbalance right and so on your notes in your in your books you'll see that uh, there are a couple over here a couple of uh, points here section a b c and d these are could be contributing factors to work life imbalance right not unable to manage my time on tasks assigned to me distracted with social media not excited with what I'm doing, lack of motivation. So uh, there's so many points here. You can, you know, if you have time, you can go ahead and, you know, put those points down, right? So what can you and I do? Let's go to practical recommendations. What can you and I do in a world that we are living in with so much of distractions, you know, uh, so much that is available, right? There's work. There's family, there's children, there is entertainment, and all the other things. How can we maintain a good work-life balance? Practical recommendations uh, from the Bible and through the scriptures. Let's, let's go over them, right? So first one, maintain the rhythm of work, sorry, worship, work, and rest. Exodus 28 through 10, observe the Sabbath day, keep it holy, work six days, and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work. Now, God is commanding here. He's saying, you, you worship the Lord, you work, but on the seventh day, you don't work, you rest. Right? This ensures a, a rhythm that is happening. There's worship, there's work, there's rest. Worship, work, rest. And then this rhythm uh, avoids extreme work. It avoids extreme laziness. Right. So what are some of the things that we can do? I'll just share some things that I personally do that has helped me. Uh, and over time, you can think of it, right? You can think of things that can help you. Uh, now, there will be times when work is, you know, is additional. We have to work. We got to do it maybe seven days a week. We have to do it. But those are just seasons. It could be there for a month or two months. But go back to the rhythm of worship, work, and rest. And something that helps me is um, what I do is I, I choose times when I can spend time with the Lord, which will not affect my work hours, nor will it affect my time with the family. Right? For example, Wake up early in the morning, spend time in prayer. Yes. Wake up early, meditate on God's word, pray, seek the Lord, ask God for, you know, just spending time in his presence. Spend a good couple of hours there. And then I know, okay, I've, I've got my time with the Lord. Now it's work. Okay. So, okay, I get to work, do what I have to do. I'm there for about eight hours. And come back now i know that it's time for family now it's very easy to come back home switch open the laptop and start working again now in ministry there will be times right i'll have to call up folks call up people respond to emails yes those are seasons of you know additional work that needs to get done but intentionally the evenings after getting back from home I know I'm going to spend time with my family, right? With the children, just, just being there with them, spending time with them, right? Just, you know, just playing with them. And then they know, now they know that, hey, they do morning to evening, you know, because uh, now they are on their summer break. But otherwise, they know, okay, evening, uh, we will have a family time. And they know it. And then, incorporate things within the family time so what i do is say okay let's read a passage from the bible and we make it like a story time and i make my children write down what you learned from today's passage or tell or they can even explain it to me what what, what did they learn from this passage and so we make it interesting right it's not like okay it's not like a bible college class but I just make it interesting, right? So, okay, this is what you learned, and this is what you can do. Um, and just one or two key takeaways, right? Spend time with the family, 
and then you know you know that you spend enough time and then the, probably when everyone's asleep you go back spend time in god's word prepare yourself for the next day whatever you have to do read your word read books additional time uh, and so you have that balance out right uh, now what i do want to say is you know uh, it's it's also important to rest right so don't push yourself don't push yourself by doing you know four or five hours of sleep and then do it uh, there will be times you have to do that but get a good amount of rest you know sometimes what i do is uh, just to help uh, monday to friday i sleep less you know they are doing a lot of things sleep very few hours but on saturday i rest i get a good rest so then i know that okay sunday i'm fresh sunday evening also i rest and then i prepare myself for the evenings later on you know to uh, what what is ahead for the next week so you can maintain that balance plan it out right? if you're working from home how are you going to plan it out right you you think about it Okay, these are things that I will do. Uh, of course, the schedule can go up and down at times. Uh, so the next point, be committed to what is important. Right? Uh, in order to maintain work-life balance, we must be committed to what is important. What is important for us? Work is important, yes. Family is important, yes. God is important, very important, yes. Right? So all three are important. Nothing can be not important. Be committed to what is important first. Now imagine, I am only doing ministry. Oh man, God, I'm going here, preaching there, I'm talking here, I'm doing outreach, I'm doing, you know, I'm preparing sermons, I'm doing everything I can, talking to people, then these youth will come, ask a hundred questions, then another couples will come, they'll say these are the problems. Now imagine there's there's so much that's happening. What are, you, what are we giving out of? If we haven't spent time in the Lord, if we haven't you know, been in God's presence, ministering, hearing from the Lord, out of what are we giving to others? Nothing. Right? Uh, we would not be able to because it's only going to stress us out. It's only going to make us tired in our body, in our mind, in our spirit. We'll be really stressed out. We will be tired because we cannot do this on our own flesh it cannot be done i've tried it it cannot be done we need to spend time in god's presence and out of that comes an overflow of family ministry work whatever we're doing out of that otherwise we're just going to be running around in circles and you know people will call us faster and all of that it's not a big deal, right? But what are we doing? Are we bearing fruit in what we are doing? Are we able to minister, bring people to Christ? Are we able to talk to, speak into people's life? We need that wisdom. And what is important first is to know what is important to you. Personal walk with God, family, meaningful relationships is more important than money, professional success, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto you. Very, very important, right? It is, it is out of this relationship that ministry happens. We cannot turn it the other way around. I'm doing ministry, so later I'll talk to God. No, yeah, we will burn out. Know what is important to you. Secondly, understand the true value and have a value scale. Money or God? Money or people? God or people? God or family? Have a value scale, right? Uh, you see what 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 is more valuable? What is important to you, right? Uh, and you know, look at look at what Mary and Martha. That's a beautiful example, right? In uh, Luke chapter ten, Mary and Martha are there. Jesus has come. Martha is doing what? Doing a good thing. 
right? She's busy cooking, right? She's making sure that everything is, she's doing the administration, making sure that everyone who's come have something to eat, something to drink. So sad, Jesus' team has walked for miles and come probably in the hot sun. Let me make something for them. Good thought. But here's Mary saying, I don't care. Not I don't care, but it doesn't matter. He's come from so far. I do understand all that. But he may be here only for a couple of hours. So I don't want to waste my time in the kitchen. I want to be at his presence. She chose what is important at that time. Was the other thing important? Yes, but not as important as this. Right? So when we have something as a value scale, it's very important to you know, put things that you're doing in a value scale. Right? Is ministry important? Yes. Is family important? Yes. So you merge them together, value them in the right way. And, I've, and I know of plenty I can share of many, many people who are broken. They're preaching every Sunday, but their families are broken. That's the point. Right? So we've got to make sure we understand and have a true value scale. Right? Keep important things important. Honor God, honor your family, honor, right? Uh, yes, money. Uh, Profession, that is important. Uh, but keep important things important. What is the focus? Right? Uh, there will be times you'll have to make tough choices. Don't be afraid to say no. Set boundaries uh, on being always connected, having those times to switch off, stop checking emails, disengage social media, digital distractions. Oh, there's so much. There's so much, you know, a, 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 a person can be present, but not be present. But I've, I think somebody long back had sent me this picture of this family of four. They're sitting at the dining table, family time together. Uh, it was just a cartoon picture, but it made so much sense. It said family time together. All four of them are having dinner. All four of them are on one on the phone. But well, it's family time together. It's definitely not family time together, right? Because you know now with phones and gadgets and all the things that is there, right? Uh, it's something that we must get rid of, right? Uh, and we must intentionally do that, intentionally. So you know, uh, some things that I do is when I go, when I sit in prayer, when I read the Word of God. I keep my phone on airplane mode. What if somebody has to call you? It's okay, they can call after three hours. What if somebody is, you know, you know, it's great difficulty. Sorry, it's on airplane mode. After that, we can. So there are times we have to say no. There are times we have to just say hey, no. I, I can't I can't do it. Right? But we say it in an honorable way and we do it in an honorable way. Right? We don't say, hey, you know, this is my work time, this is my prayer time, nobody better call me. You don't have to do all that. Put it on airplane mode, don't have to explain anything to anybody. You don't have to. Right? Set boundaries, get rid of distractions. Right? And that way you will you will realize, hey, there's so much of time that I have that I can use for with my children, with my family. And then you have family time, set aside times. So something that I do is every year, twice, right? April, May, somewhere around that time. And uh, during November, because Christmas time, we don't want to travel. We have a lot of work. So November, we travel as a family. It's done. It is settled. No, that will not change. Whether it is... Uh, the end times or no, we are going. Right? It will not change. We planned it in the beginning of the year. The leaves have already been applied in the beginning of the year. Even for November, yes, it's already applied. Right? Children, what about children? Yes, everything is done. Everything is planned. 
So that will not change. So we know that in a year, two times, we will, we will go out as a family. And that's good enough, right? Uh, uh, and, and so that way we are, we know, uh, you know, and even during your day-to-day -day course, uh, do simple things with your children or with your family, right? Uh, have times or, you know, like just being friends with them, pray together, attend church together, uh, you know, just, just be there together, cook together, spend time together. And it's such a joy, right? Because, you know, you'll never get these times back again. Right. Keep short accounts, checks and balances. Uh, uh, you know, there will be times of uh, long days, long uh, work timing. So, you know, sometimes we go on missions. We go APC missions. We go on the short term Bible college. We used to go out uh, for two weeks at times. At times it would be just Monday to Friday for one week. We're going out of station teaching there. Sometimes it's two weeks. So I know two weeks I won't be able to see my children and my family. So keep account. So when I come back, I know, okay, uh, I can take about three or four days, be with the family, take time to rest, uh, take leaves, right? Um, but keep short checks and accounts, uh, uh, checks and balances. Okay, here. So two weeks was intense, Bible study, teaching, and all of it. So let me spend a couple of days with the family, right? Just resting, being with the family. So you know you're balancing it out. Right? Guard your resources, very important, your time, energy, and money. Ephesians 5, 15 and 15 to 17. So be careful how you live. Don't be like ignorant people, but like wise people. Make good use of every opportunity you have because these days are evil. Because these are evil days. Don't be fools then, but try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Right, uh, guard your resources and avoid wasting time. Avoid wasting time. Now, time with you know, spent with family, you can be, you know, uh, one of the things that I do with the kids is I play carrom board, I play chess, uh, and these are games that I played way back when I was a little kid, uh, and it's not a waste of time, right? But guard against things that drain your time, your energy, and money, right? There will be times. Uh, no. Uh, spend if you feel that you're spending too much time on the phone. It's a weekend. Spending too much time on the phone. Take it and keep it away. Right now, here are a few energy leaks. Very important. Not minding your own business, getting involved in things that other people should be doing. Number one reason for energy leaks. But he is doing that, but she's doing that. Right? Minding your own business. Paul writes it very clearly. He says, mind your own business. Do what you have to do. You're working, you're in the church, do what you do. Don't worry about the gossip and the slander. It's only going to drain you out. Right? Getting things, getting involved in what other people are doing is not our responsibility. Overreacting to situations, right? Could be an emotional draining thing. Right? Somebody says, Paul, I didn't like the way you led the worship today. What are you going to do? Oh, man. Am I I'm not good enough? Oh, God, I don't think I'm a good worship leader. Why did you call me as a worship leader? But I've been leading worship for the past 10 years. Nobody told me this. And what went wrong? Were the chords wrong? Was I singing wrong? Was the mic working? Was this? And then by the time we finish thinking about it in one hour, you have wasted your time, your energy. And then after that one hour, we don't even feel like doing anything. Don't overreact. Just leave it. Let it go. Distractions, social media, chatting, texting. Oh, man, people nowadays can stay for hours on Instagram. I was talking to this uh, young man uh, last week, and he said his 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 mother was saying to me uh, in a very joking, loving way. He sits on Instagram for three, four hours, and the son is saying, "No, not three, four hours, just two hours." I said, two hours on Instagram. What do you do on Instagram? No, I'll check who all posted their photos, 
and then I will like their photos. And then I put a photo and see how many people like that. Photo. Oh gosh, I thought to myself, do you really have so much time? But they have. It it, it I, you know they, they have time to do all of this. Now I don't know if if that's right or wrong, but for me it is impossible for me to spend one hour on the phone continuously. Have Facebook or, or these other things, but it's impossible for me. It's five minutes, ten minutes maximum. Now, why? Because I uh, okay. This is for me personally, right? I just feel it's draining now. It's it's a, it's a waste of time. Yeah, there are important things that we do, right? There are uh, emails that I that we read. There are you know now we have a lot of our conversations through WhatsApp. Okay, other things, it's it's a waste of time, right? Investing resources into unprofitable things that don't really build things, gossiping, or or you know uh, uh, taking time, spending too much time on unwanted matters, then also overcrowding your life with unnecessary activity or with the activity that can easily be delegated, right? Uh, and so what are we doing right now in you know in church is well so what we did is we said okay we'll raise up team leaders so now we have a welcome team we have a team leader we raise up a welcome team you're in charge next we have the publications team uh, and so we raised up all these team leaders and then every now and then we add people into those teams and so the teams are growing so it's not like I have to think and worry, oh, who's standing in the book table tomorrow on Sunday? Who's doing the greeting? I don't have to worry about it. It's delegated. For me, I think about, OK, God, minister. I'm going to be ministering the word or the worship time. And the people, let them be ministered to. That's criteria. I don't have to worry who's doing the declaration this Sunday or who is going to you know, get the uh, uh, meet with the first-time visitors. No, I don't have to worry about all that. Themes are set in place, and we set them up, right? So it's easily it's delegated. They can all do. It. Who's going to do the media? Who's going to do the PPD? Everything has been sorted. So even as you are in leadership, raise up leaders, raise up teams, uh, because it's not a one-man show. It can never be a one-man show. It. You, we have to raise up leaders, otherwise we'll be overcrowding our life. Uh, now, these tasks may be important, good tasks, but if we don't delegate, it overcrowds our life. Then later we realize, hey, I wasted so much time on this when I could just have delegated. Uh, many a times there are people, uh, I'm talking of from the church point of view, there are people who want to serve, but they've not been given an opportunity. So you just ask them, hey, can you serve in the uh, you know, uh, ushering team? Or welcome team. I say yes, I don't mind. That's it. You have somebody in your team. It's it's uh, you're not overcrowding your life there, right? So next one, develop personal efficiency and productivity and time saving skills. Uh, Ecclesiastes nine sixteen through eighteen. Wisdom is better than strength. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Look for ways where you can be more productive. Look for ways where you can save time, increase efficiency, maximize your output. One of the things that I did personally when I joined, uh, I think I've shared it a couple of times with uh, students. And uh, one of the things that I did personally, I knew that if I had a phone with me, I will not do well in my Bible college. I knew it. Somewhere in the first week, I said, I cannot do this. Every time I pray, oh, who's calling? Is it my friend from workplace? Or is it this person? Is it my parents? Is it? So I got rid of my phone. Just took out the SIM card, took the phone, put it into the toilet, and flushed it. Never to see my phone again for two years. And, the, and all my friends said, oh, you could have given me the phone. I said, no, it's OK. I don't want it. Two years, no fun. Get into the word. What is the reason I've come to develop my personal efficiency, to develop productivity, 
and to save my time. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and throw your phone away. You needed to join online class, right? Uh, but what I'm saying is uh, find ways where you can just, you know, increase your efficiency, save time. If it has to be keeping your phone or keeping your uh, digital equipment in you know, airplane mode or whatever it is, do it. Uh, but if it's going to increase your efficiency, do it. Use technology uh, and tools that can help your productivity. Now, I use a lot of things. I use eSword. I use a lot of commentaries. And I'm so thankful for the internet, right? Because uh, I use so much of material that's available online. You've got David Guzik's the entire Bible. Uh, and you've got so many commentaries. Uh, you've got you know, translations of Bibles. You've got material, uh, study material, so much. And I always go in, I look up Greek words, ancient Greek words, Hebrew words. Uh, it is exciting to learn. And, and so use technology, use tools that God has given. Organize for improved efficiency. Uh, uh, simple things like naming your file, month to date, prefixes, uh, 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 you know, storing up important files. I do have files with me that, you know, when I was in Bible college that I prepared, uh, it's about, I think, 20, uh, a 2010 or uh, when uh, I made these sermons. And so I would put them in my old computer that I had and I opened a small folder. And uh, sermons or messages, I don't know what it was, but I saved it there. I said, all oh, my old. So I have the sermons that I've prepared past 12 years ago. There. Right? And some of them are on paper. I still have it with me. Right? So uh, organize yourself. But there are places where you have to let go of things. Just let it go. Right? Uh, declutter. Learn to get, delegate even when you feel like doing it yourself. Very important. Let go. Let someone else do it. Set it. See it as providing them an opportunity to grow. Basically, raising up people. Right? Sometimes we feel that we can do it the best. I'm the best among these five people. Right? For example, I'm the best among these five people. Now, it's very easy for me to say, no, I'll only preach because these five people are not good enough. So what, we, what, 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 what do I do? I can say, OK, I know. I know I may be better than them. I may know I know the word more than them. Then. But if I don't give them an opportunity, how will they learn? How will they learn? They're just going to keep running after you the whole time. And they'll be only watching us. And we're not giving them an opportunity. So learn to delegate. Right? Of course, there are other criteria, right? So uh, whether it is. Uh, uh, in the media team or uh, you know uh, IT team, you can't have somebody who doesn't know it and just delegate to them. Now that is wrong leadership. But you know that they are capable. There are some things that they can do. Begin to delegate, right? Set short deadlines for your tasks, right? Uh, you can have deadlines, weekly deadlines, quarterly deadlines, monthly, quarterly, half yearly, yearly. Uh, but it's always good to have short deadlines. Something that I really like to do is two-week deadlines, 15 days. Uh, divide the month, 30 days, 15 days, 15 days. So first 15 days, these are the things that need to be done. And, okay, the next 15 days. So then when you look over the whole month, uh, you say, okay, this month was, these are things that I did. These are things that I can improve. Uh, these are things that I uh, was supposed to do, but I didn't do. Uh, and then you begin to work on that, right? So you can have a monthly, you can have a yearly plan, you can have two years, five-year plan, 10-year plan. So, you know, nowadays you have Excel sheets, you can save up everything. So I have a one year, five year, three years, 10 years, 15 years. I'm tired of doing this, so, but then I have it all, right? So you can begin to work on that. Uh, reuse content that you have developed earlier, update it, modify it. Um, work remotely whenever you feel like uh, when when you know uh, you can save travel time now after the pandemic it's, you know uh, working remotely is also possible and remember little changes 
bring big results. Little changes can bring big results in our life. Right? If you're praying for 30 minutes every day, push it to 45 minutes. Little changes bring big results. If you're praying for, you're reading the word every day for half an hour, push it to 45 minutes. Little changes, right? If you're spending time with your family every day, or family prayer is 30 minutes, push it to 45 minutes. Now, this is just an example, right? Small changes will bring big results. I always say this to myself. Big doors open on small hinges. You look at though you can have a 10 feet door but the hinges on that door could just be five inches big doors open on small hinges so whatever thing whatever you're doing each one of us it could be small things very very meager very small things nobody's going to clap and appreciate you and say wonderful job no nobody even knows you've done it but if you've done it sincerely, you've done it faithfully, God is the one who opens big doors for us. right? And so just be faithful in those small things. God will open up big doors for you. Right? All right. Uh, any questions, any thoughts? Uh, we'll continue with this. I may be going a little fast. Uh, the reason is uh, we, I just want to make sure that I at least complete before uh, you know, the mid of April, so that you guys have some time to even go through your notes. So we have a couple of more chapters, I think, and we should be able to finish uh, maybe in a, maybe for five classes. So yes, so if I'm going too fast, feel free to stop me. Uh, maybe if you have questions too, you can, next week we can answer them. All right, any thoughts, any questions? So we can close. No questions, no thoughts. I hope you all are uh, you know, just taking in everything that you can. Right, let's close in prayer. Right? Uh, would anyone like to close? Rosalind, would you like to close in prayer? Rosalind or John, anybody can. Let's pray. Wonderful Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful session that we had, oh Lord. Father God, even so much to learn. Father God, help us to grasp every word that comes out of your servant, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray, Father God, as we as we hear and as we meditate on it, Father God, let it bring wisdom and knowledge to us, O oh Lord, that we may apply it, Father God. And also we pray, Father God, that let it be used for the extension of your kingdom, Father God. Lord, we thank you. We bring every every um, student that is that is in this class oh lord lord i pray father god help each one of us oh lord that we may do your will father god not our will but father let your will be done in our lives father god lord we thank you and we bless our dear pastor emmanuel father god bless him father god and i pray father god let more revelations and be given unto him father god that he may that he is already a blessing to the kingdom of God, Father God. I pray, Lord, expand him, Father God, in your kingdom, Father God. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Sorry for taking additional time. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you on Monday. God bless. Bye now.